Well, I hope you had a great Christmas. All right, great. Well, it's always nice uh, to have you on Sunday of the year. And uh, I've, I've met some really nice visitors. And uh, it, it's an honor. It's an honor to have our friend, Dr. Neil Weaver, president of uh, Louisiana, Louisiana, <laughs> like I said that, Dr. Weaver, Louisiana. Uh, Baptist University down in Louisiana. Would you please make him welcome? Give him a nice round of applause. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you, sir. Thanks for being here. It's an honor to have you. Basat and Sarah, it is nice to have you two with us this morning. North Carolina by way of Westchester, Nigeria. North Carolina by way of Westchester to Landmark today. It's nice to have you all. Let's give him a nice round of applause. God bless you all. Anybody else? I know we said visitors, but I didn't get to see. I was talking to some people. How many visitors we got today? See, lift, lift, lift your hand. Okay, great. Thanks. Night woman, it's nice to meet you. Come on, Robert hits mama. Let's go ahead and give her a nice round of applause. Awesome. Anybody visiting for the last time? Uh, let me see. Good. <clears throat> well, you know, I said last week, um, if you weren't here, let me just, you know, my father deals with the dementia, and I've said that. And, uh, you know, and last year he pulled me aside at the Christmas gathering and he said, you know, the Bible says it's a shame or a sin. He said it's a sin for a man to have long hair. And I said, no, it says it's a shame. And uh, he got on me a little heavy. And, uh, you know, but he was really good this year. He didn't say anything about it. As a matter of fact, I called him and I said, Dad, what do you want for Christmas? He said, I need some hair. And I said, you know what? <laughs> so I got him some and I want you to see his picture right there. That's at the old Christmas party this year. So then I took a picture with him, the next one. You know, we have one together, yep. And then, uh, let's see, this is my mom and dad and Carrie, uh, who's right back there, my niece. So there they are. That's, I, I thought I'd, you know, show you my dad and mom. That's good. All right. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Uh, Father, this year... Uh, we want to receive your glory. Just fall on us. Fall on us, God. Anoint us. Fill uh, this auditorium every weekend with your presence. We want to see more people come to Christ than ever before. We want to see people go through the waters of baptism more than ever. We want the opportunities to disciple and uh, those opportunities in the community to reach out. Uh, God, as uh, what we've seen in the clips and the small group study that we're about to take as a church together, God, just prepare our hearts this year where we don't want to live in that level of mediocrity. Uh, God, we don't, um, a status quo, we want to put everything behind us and uh, start this year afresh. In Christ, I pray, amen. So we've been talking about the glory of God. God, show us uh, show us your glory. And, you know, Moses, the last couple of weeks, started really back December the 2nd, 55 years on the hill, which was a great Sunday. And then Jason brought a great message on December the 9th on the uh, five cups. And then last, uh, on the 16th, we talked about, you know, pleasing God, receiving, you know, how do we receive God's glory? And, uh, you know, there was five things that we mentioned, you know, love, believe, obey and that's a real key word uh, on that board and uh, praise and serve then last week uh, five more words you know when it came to Samuel and Eli Hophni Phineas uh, you know what he said to those people of God he said listen return repent commit commit confess and victory God gives us victory and uh, so today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the time that we have the results the results the results of God's glory, the results of God's glory. Now, back in Acts chapter 2, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, and that's exactly what it means. The apostolic age is getting ready to uh, begin. And so you have the Acts of the Apostles. You have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the book of Acts. And so in Acts chapter 2 is prophecy that was fulfilled uh, by John the Baptist and Matthew 3 when he stood before the crowd. He said, listen, one is coming that is greater than I am. Greater than I And he's so great. I'm not worthy to even tie uh, the shoelaces on his sandals. And uh, I'm going to baptize him with water. 
But many days later, he is going to baptize you with fire. And then, Acts chapter 1, that's prophecy fulfilled. Matthew 3 uh, is, the pro- is the prophecy, and then it's fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. Ten days before Pentecost, Jesus is getting ready to ascend. And he says this to his followers in the very first chapter of Acts and the fifth verse. John baptized with water. This is Jesus speaking. But in just a few days, 10 to be exact, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so that was a reiteration of what John uh, was saying in uh, Matthew 3. So when you get to Acts chapter 1 and the next couple of verses, it's 1 and verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people all about me everywhere in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of, of the earth. Now, here's what was you know, taking place. As soon as the Holy Spirit falls, the glory of God falls, they went out and they witnessed. They witnessed. Here is the, here is the birthday of the church age. The Old Testament era is concluding. And the New Testament era is beginning. Then when Christ comes back to receive his own, then the church age will be over and the kingdom will begin. The kingdom of God will begin on earth. Now, I love new things. That's what's great about the new year. I love new things. New clothes, eh? Can I have a witness? Uh, Maybe a new car. Uh, Maybe a new house. Yeah, she didn't get one. She didn't. I promise you, those of you visiting, she did not get a new car. But she's just amening what I said. You'll find that frequently throughout this message. And we love it. So God bless you, Sylvia. Thank you uh, for reaffirming that. But it may not be new to us, but it's new to you. I mean, we love new things, right? Uh, we, just, we, we, we love a new year because it's a fresh start. We can put everything behind us and we can start over. Uh, I, it's just what, you know, the book of Lamentations says to us in chapter 3. You know, your mercies, they're new every morning. Uh, it's, it's so refreshing, a new year. But let me give you a couple passages to encourage you or for your inspiration. The first one is in Job 22, beginning in 26. Then you will take delight in the Almighty and look up to God. You'll pray to him and he will hear you. You will fu- he, and you will fulfill your vows to him. You will succeed in whatever you choose to do. And light will shine on the road ahead of you. If people are in trouble, you say, help them. God will save them. Even sinners will be rescued. They will be rescued because your hands are pure. You're glorifying God. Uh, you're glorifying God with your life. You're bringing glory to God. And you are going to be able to encourage and help other people because the glory of God has fallen on you. Now, uh, Paul, uh, the one you saw the movie clip about, he writes this in Philippians. And these are familiar verses. And these are helpful verses here toward the end of the year and the beginning of the new year. It's Philippians 3, beginning in verse 13, just two verses. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past, looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Paul said, listen, let's just put those things. And Paul had a lot you know, to put behind him uh, in his life. And uh, we, we, if you don't know this story, you know, I encourage you to read the conversion of the apostle in Acts chapter 9, how he met Jesus on the Damascus road when Jesus had ascended to heaven, but he meets him on that road and his life was changed forever and he never looked back. And so he writes this, you know, I, I put these things behind me. So, when we say all this, we, 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 we look at Acts chapter 2 and we look at Pentecost and what happened. There's really, there's five things that we can pull out of what happened uh, there at Pentecost in that upper, in that upper room. Uh, the very first thing is that we could say is that, you know, the prophecy by John the Baptist and prophecy by Jesus Christ, prophecy was fulfilled. 
And then uh, the Holy Spirit falls there in Acts chapter 2, and there was the power to serve. There was the power to go out. Um, Three, it's the birth of the church age. Uh, It's the birth of the church out of Pentecost. The church age uh, begins, the anointed movement of the church age. The fourth thing we can say is that the the Holy Spirit filled the disciples. This is the beginning of the apostolic age, and the disciples were filled with the Spirit. And, you know, there were signs and wonders that uh, that went out. They, were, uh, they spoke in unknown languages. It was, it was just a movement of God, which brings us to the fifth thing, uh, that the apostle, Simon Peter, speaks his very first message, and 3,000 converts uh, come to Christ. Here is that verse in Acts 2, verse 41. Those who believed uh, what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. So the move of the Holy Spirit was just incredible. Well, what's, man, what's today? Are we seeing the move of God? We are. We're seeing, we're seeing the move of God, uh, different parts of the world. And you know what? I, I want to experience it here. I, I want God to move here. And I, I'm not saying that. What, what is a, it's just I was talking to Dr. Weaver before this service started. And uh, he said, Matt, there's this church in Knoxville. And, man, they've, uh, they've added 1,000 people uh, this year uh, just by conversion and people coming to Christ. And, man, that's amazing. You know what? God, God can move. And, you know, one, one thing uh, about these apostles and the disciples, and, you know, in the, uh, they were all together. They were unified. Uh, there was this uh, in, in eight you know, inside of them, desire to, to see God moving. And, and, and that's exactly what, well, what's a person got to do? Does a person, you know, got to throw their hands up? And does a person have to run through an auditorium? Uh, do I have to like jump across the back of these seats all the way to the back? Do I have to see a cloud? Uh, do I have to see a, a haze about years ago? And when I was a sophomore in college, I went to a place called Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, over from Pensacola, uh, Florida, where I was going to college. And the college, and I don't have to go into it, you know, the college I went to is very regimented. And, uh, you know, there were uh, a lot of, you know, we all wore the suits and ties and the music, the doxology, and it was just, it was just different. I was used to it. Uh, but when I went to Biloxi, Mississippi, I had never been to a camp meeting before. A camp meeting was a whole different experience. And when my buddies and I, we got there, it was this screened-in tabernacle, and uh, it was full. It was full of people, and, man, you could feel the buzz. The energy was just electric. And uh, the guy singing, his name was Mac Evans, and I had a knowledge of Mac Evans uh, because uh, my folks, my parents had a uh, old quartet album, the Landmark Quartet, and Mac Evans was on that, and they would play that a lot. So I knew Mac Evans, so uh, he sang, and the guy speaking uh, he was evangelist uh, Maze Jackson. And man, when he started, he just... Brrr. But boy, when man, Mac Evans started singing, this guy jumped up and he screamed as loud, a lot like Sylvia, and just screamed as loud and, and ran out of the tabernacle. And I could see him in that screened in tab. He ran all the way one time, twice, you know. And on the third time, he got a little tired. But he came in and, and, and he sat down in the seat and he was just... And I thought, man, that dude is wild. I had never witnessed anything like that before. And I thought, uh, you know, I thought of that story. And I thought, do I, do I have to do that? Do I have to do that to get the glory of God? To re- is that what it is? Is that what it is, God? Um, you know, there are some churches, they schedule their amens. And if somebody were to say amen out of the schedule, it throws everything off. And so it's diff- different. Now we can say different strokes for uh, different folks. Do I have to holler amen like Sil? Yeah, there it is right there. Do I have to holler that, you know, to get the glory of God to fall upon me? Now, if you talk to Sylvia, she's been alcohol free for 45 years. So 35, 35. So you know why she's... Uh, She feels good, and God has saved her from that and has given her a new life. So she's got reason to shout. She's got reason to shout. But let me tell you this. 
We can't base the glory of God on feeling or action. Because there are times that I just don't feel like it. There are times. Right? Now, I'm going to tell you, right now I'm feeling it. Right now I feel good. I feel the Spirit of God. And you know, when you get around God's people and God's moving in your midst, there is a great feeling. Uh, there is a feeling like you've never experienced before. So, you know, God's, uh, his moving, it is emotional. And we can get emotional. That young lady that sang that song, Danny, God bless you, you know. Uh, man, that was just a powerful song. And, uh, you know, uh, it was an emotional song. And there are some things that when we read and we hear about, it just takes us to a different level. But you know what? I'm going to give you this one word, this one word that has to do with the glory of God. And the word is desire. Can you say that word with me? Desire. Desire. Listen, when the Holy Spirit fell uh, on that, uh, in that upper room, there was a, well, let's go, we got to go. There was a desire to go out and to teach and, and to talk to people, you know, about uh, the love of God and the love of Christ and to serve. And the movement was so passionate and it was so strong. You say, Matt, there's just times that I don't, man, if you, if you knew what I was going through right now, there's just times that man then let the Spirit of God just take you to another level in your spiritual walk with Christ. And I promise you, if you'll just open your mind and your eyes to what God is doing around us, God is going to take you to another level in your spiritual walk with him. Just let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. This is all about the You think Paul felt like praising or whatever. He said, man, there's just times I don't feel like praising. Or, But can you imagine? Here's Paul. He's in those, he's in those chains. He's chained. He's, his ankles are chained. His, his wrists are chained. He's laying in that dungeon. It's not like a jail uh, like we would know today. It's, it's like almost like a, just a hole that they throw him in. He, he couldn't even stand up. And he's laying in there and he's reeling. He's reeling from all the, uh, the, the beatings and the whippings. And so he's got open sores and open wounds and uh, some that have been reopened. And he's thinking, man, but there he's, he has the intestinal fortitude and the desire, the desire and the passion. And, and he's, he begins to write the Pauline epistle, the prison epistles and he's hey can you just imagine Paul man don't give up on me man I'm I've got a joyful attitude my spirit is strong God's moving and I want to write these letters to to encourage believers uh, where we've been ministering to and the churches that we've been going to we want to encourage these believers I got to do it so he's in prison and he's writing these he's writing these letters and the Holy Spirit is just you know he's Given him those words to write, but he could have said, man, I'm just so tired. I'm so beaten down. But there was such a desire. There was such a desire in his heart. And yet, you know, yesterday I was up in my office and I, uh, I, looked on the, I looked out the window and it was just, you know, it was a lot colder yesterday than it was the previous days. And, you know, the windows up in the mansion office, they're not... Uh, you know, the cool breeze, the cold <laughs> can come right up. It's like having the windows open. It's just cold up there, you know. And, but I, I look down on the window seal, and there's about six or seven flies. And they're all laying on their back, just dead, or frozen, done. But there's one little fly. Man, he's just walking around. <laughs> and I was going to toot him on the way, and I thought, no, I'm going to leave him alone. I'm just going to. I'm going to let him enjoy, you know, what little time he's got going on there. I don't know the, I don't know the, I don't know the life of a fly. But, man, I just looked at him because I was, I was being taught a lesson. I was being taught a lesson. Man, I mean, he's just walking by. He's real slow, real slow. And he's looking at all his buddies, you know, laying there. Just, you know his heart was broken. You know his little fly heart was broken, you know. And he, you know, I, I was looking at some of his buddies just to see if some of the wings were nothing. They were dead. They were out. They were cold. They were cold. But, man, he was just walking around. He was walking around. I thought, you know what? He's outlived his buddies. This is a, <laughs> this is a, 
It's a crass illustration, but he got a desire. <laughs> he's got a desire. It's cold. The wind's coming up, and he's just crawling on that window. He's got a desire. You say, how are you going to relate that to Paul? I just did, because Paul <laughs> is thinking about what David wrote. He's laying there in that prison. He's laying there with rats and refuse and, you know, guys just saying, man, I'll, this is crazy. And he's saying, I got the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Man, I'm putting everything behind me. And I'm going to press toward the mark. And he's writing all these words and you just say, man, wow. A desire, that desire, a passion, a passion to move, to move for God, to move to God, move for God. It's, you know, it's. You know, that desire is to know, to be taught. God, I want to be taught. God, I want to know. I want to know everything there is to know about you, God. Man, take me to that place. God, my spirit is open. My spirit is free. I want you to use me. I want to serve. Uh, I want to live for you. I, I want to read your word. I want, to, I want to just, you know, saturate my mind with your word, God. And I want to talk to you every day. I want to forgive. I want to forgive and forget and move on. I don't want to let anything keep me in chains and bondage. But God, I want to move on. I want to move on. Now listen, here's some great verses to revisit. And it's Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit, this kind of glory in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience. Hey, you know what? Let's say these words together. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. It's not done. Verse 23 says, gentleness, self-control. There is no law against these things. Nobody has to say, hey, you've got to love. You have to love. You have to, you, you have to be, you, you have to have, you have it. When you trusted Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Spirit came into your life. And it just, it was a natural response to love people and, and, and to be joyful and to have peace and to be kind and patient. Yeah, we have to work on them. But you have the help of the Holy Spirit that helps you in every one of these areas. Jesus said in Matthew 22, Two, he said, love me more than anything with all your soul, your mind, your heart, and then love your neighbor. That's everybody. If there's no love inside of you for people, then you need to ask yourself, am I truly a follower of Jesus Christ? Because the Holy Spirit gives us love for other people and, and kindness and, and patience Listen, that is the manifestation of the Spirit of God. That is the manifestation of the glory of God. And then, because of these Corinthian Christians, you know, that Paul had been working with, they were so, they had seen what the, what, what the movement of God was doing, and they said, Paul, we want these gifts that you're talking about. You know, the, the, the Spirit, and I've said it, uh, uh, you know, millions of times, what I just read to you in Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23, is the fruit of the Spirit. When you receive the Spirit, you receive the fruit of the Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, not everybody has the same gifts, but we all have different gifts. And the Corinthian believers were saying, Paul, man, we, we, we love what's happening. Please, we want these gifts. We want these gifts that you're talking about and teaching about, and we, we see uh, what people are possessing. Paul, we want to be a part of that. Paul, is, he's saying, now listen, when people gather, here, come, here, comes the, here comes the benefit of it, and it's 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 12. And, and the same is true for you, Paul said, since you are so eager, that word right there we could put, since you're so desirous of these gifts to have special abilities the Spirit gives, seek those that will strengthen the whole church. Strengthen, uh, that will strengthen the whole church. Paul's saying, listen, let's do something uh, when, when, when people come together. Paul's painting a very different picture. It, what is it, Paul? What will we see? What's going what's gonna to happen? And we explained that a couple of weeks ago in the Old Testament, you know, when the cloud came down and there was this, uh, the presence of God and the Shekinah glory. And man, they just, they just couldn't move. Matter of fact, the priest would just stand, you know, they'd stand outside the tabernacle. It was so powerful and it's moved into this different uh, dimension. 
And, and Paul is saying, listen, this is so important right here, Paul said. In 1 Corinthians 14, a few verses before, as a matter of fact, the very first verse, let love be your highest goal. You say that with me, let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities, the spirit gifts, especially the ability to prophesy. Paul is he's saying, listen, it's, these are days in which we live in, Paul, and guess what? These are days that we are living in now. The Spirit of God that was working in this day is the same Spirit that's working right now in this day and age. Every one of us can experience what God is doing. You know what I love? I love these um, uh, volunteers. Volunteers out here. I, I, there's something about a volunteer. You know, when you, when you walk in, um, you know, people are smiling. People are holding the door open. And uh, then people are, you know, giving coffee and, and uh, you know, just, and people are saying, hey, you know, thanks for coming today. And you know what? You have no idea what people are going through when they walk into this room. Uh, even though it's Christmas time and it's New Year, some of us, man, we're glad Christmas is, you know, it's just been so stressful. You know, people, people can be inside a room with hundreds of people and be so lonely. People can be at a Christmas party and, you know, people, it seems like everybody's having a great time, but there's just some loneliness in a person's heart. And, you know, they're trying to, uh, they're trying to, uh, you know, find that, that place of happiness. You know, that when I read those, that whole list in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, there's nothing mentioned about happiness because happy, it's not based, you know, because we're going to go through circumstances. Just because Billy Graham, I read in his devotional just a couple days ago, uh, he said, just because you are a Christian and because you're, a, uh, you're following Jesus and you've had your, you have Jesus in your life doesn't mean you're going to be free from problems or free from tragedy or, or free from that. I just got a, I got a call yesterday from our Christine Kane who, who, uh, who attends uh, here. And she said, Matt, my 18-year-old nephew uh, passed away, um, overdosed. And uh, the, the family is just besides themselves. And I saw Denny and Joyce Meyer walk in this morning. And Nicole, your, your family. I mean, who would have thought last Sunday after the service that we'd be at the hospital saying goodbye to his sister of only 59 years old. Just suddenly, you know, pass away. And I think, man, that's so true. So there are people, you know, who do. Their, their hearts are you know, they're, they're broken and they're sad, but they can come into a room where people are talking about the Lord and, you know, you're, you're, you're having fellowship one with another and, 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 you know, God's moving and God wants to move and God wants to move in the hearts of people. And, I, and we want God, that's our desire more than anything this year. God, you just move in the hearts of people. We want to see it. And so they, you walk in and people are, you know, talking one to another. And then these, these, uh, all these musicians up here, of course, Rick, our director, you know, he coordinates all this. He's our worship director, our worship pastor. And so he's, you know, he's putting all this together. And, and, and these people are volunteers and they, they come up here and they rehearse. They rehearse yesterday for about three hours, given of their time. And they'll, they'll rehearse at night and they'll look at all the music. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's just, it's beyond me. You know, and I know that not every church is, you know, not blessed, uh, like, you know, but everybody, they're trying, you know, they're trying, they're trying to do their best and they're trying to put their best foot forward. And there's no corner, you know, on the worship piece. People worship all, all different parts of the world. People worship differently. Uh, they worship one God, Jehovah. They worship the Lord almighty. And whether it's with a, a guitar or, you know, lights or whether it's a little, you know, guy standing behind a podium and he's saying, turn to page three. Man, everybody's worshiping and they're trying to, you know, please God with their worship. And, and uh, God, we want to please you with our worship and honor you. And, and it's just amazing what God can do. You know, the Bible's pretty uh, plain when it talks about worship and the glory of God. In Psalm 33, verse 3, uh, the verse says this, sing a new song of praise to him. Play skillfully, putting your best foot forward. Uh, on, the, on the harp or the electric guitar like Gary plays. We could put that in there. And, and sing with joy. 
and sing with joy. Now, I love the, I love what the King James Bible says. The King James Bible says, uh, loudly and skillfully, loudly and skillfully. That skillful is that optimum word. That's a, that's a key word right there because, you know, music uh, plays on the emotions uh, of people. And when it's connected to Christ and the Holy Spirit uses it and, and, and brings it into uh, an, uh, an arena or an, uh, an area uh, where God's name is lifted up and Jesus' name is lifted up because he is a name above all names. He's the name above all names. And, and the Spirit, and the Spirit of God just moves in the hearts and he wants. And that's what Paul's saying. Let's encourage one another. Let's build each other up. Let's take what God has given us and let's build each other up and let's use it the best way we know how. And God, you know, to please him. It's like, you know, uh, uh, like a mess. Somebody say, Matt, how do you, you know, what do you, how do you get your messages? And Well, you know what, I'll go with uh, like next week is, uh, you know, January. And so, you know, just the flow. Start me up. Let's, let's get started on the right foot, you know. We're going to have... By the way, next week we're going to have communion together, uh, you know, as a, as a body of believers. We're going to have communion together in the first service and in the second service. And, you know, I just, I want people to, to leave here, you know, um, after I feel what God has given me. And I'll take a, you know, I'll say, God, where's a good, where's a good chapter or scripture to start or a story that will relate or help somebody, you know, to what they may be going through. And uh, to lift them up, to encourage them. And, because it's just, it's, it's great, you know, somebody will walk out and say, I feel better. I feel like burdens, you know, are lifted. And uh, it just seems like, you know, the, the load's a little lighter. And it's not as heavy as it was when I first came in. Or I learned something today. The Spirit learned, taught me something today. Or, you know, the best is, if you walked in here this morning and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you've never invited Jesus, the King of this world, the King of kings, the Savior of this world who died for you and who is offering eternal life, if you've never invited Jesus to come into your life, He can save you. He can give you eternal life. He can start. Your life can start anew. God wants God loves you more than anything. And so I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask you, I want to, I want to give you one more verse. I love this verse. It's 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10. But whatever I am now, this is Paul talking. This is Paul talking. He said, it is because God poured out his special favor on me. Not without results. For I've worked harder than any of the other Apostles. Now, he's getting a little cocky right there. He got a little ego going on. I like that. But it, it, it was not I, but God. There's the glory. Glory is going to God. Glory is going to God. I, but God, who was working through me by his grace. I couldn't do what I do, Paul is saying, without God's glory in my life. Couldn't do it. But I want to give it back to him. You know, Revelation 4, verse 11 says, Thou art worthy, O God, to receive glory, power, and honor. You are worthy. Can you say that? God, you are worthy. You are worthy. God is worthy. Let's stand together.